Alaska. We all want our children to grow up to become happy, healthy, and successful adults. But unfortunately, kids don't come with an instruction manual. Luca, come on, Luca. Luca. So most of us just stumble through, come here. armed with nothing more than our good intentions and our hopes that it'll turn out okay. Luca, come here. But trial and error is not the best way to raise a child. When are you gonna start studying, girl? I get to have a social life if I want to. And the constant friction all too often leads to revenge or revolt. So how can we ensure that our sons and daughters will become confident, contributing members of society? How do we bring them up to be the best they can be? In other words, how do we train them without breaking them? Don't wrinkle the suit. Well, perhaps that's the problem. Children are not dogs. They can't be trained like dogs are trained. They aren't controllable items. Try to train, control, or own your child, and you'll lose their love forever. A child is not a special species of animal distinct from man. A child is a man or a woman who has simply not reached their full growth yet. So any law which applies to the behavior of men and women also applies to children. There you are. For example, I told you to wait in the car. How would you like to be treated in the same manner a child is typically treated? What if you were constantly contradicted and ordered about? Mother, what do you think of this one? Oh, they're both hideous. Give me that. Here, try this on. And please do something with your hair. You can't leave it hanging straggly like that. And restrain from doing whatever you wanted to do. Name? Susan Whitney. You're not on the list. Step to the side, please. If you were treated with the same level of disrespect the average child receives, you'd resent it. In fact, you'd probably revolt. Well, it's no different for a child, except he's too small to strike back. So, he gets revenge instead. He'll damage his possessions on purpose. Or pester you. Mom, I'm be late for the game! Accidentally spill things. And generally destroy the peace of the home. This revenge is standard child behavior. Because he's fighting for his own self-determinism. His right to make his own decisions about himself. To get a better idea of this, the next time a child sits on your lap, notice how he'll sit there quite happily. Then put your arms around him as if he's being made to sit there. What will happen? Instantly, he'll squirm. He'll fight to get away, get angry, cry. Yet he was happy to sit there on his own before you started holding him. That's what happens when you interrupt someone's self-determinism. Your efforts to mold, train, or own your child react on her exactly the same way. The sweetness and love of a child is preserved only as long as she can exert her own self-determinism. A child has a right to his self-determinism, his own power of choice. For example, if you take a child and make him play a musical instrument, his ability to play that instrument will not improve. You have to consult the child's willingness. He would at least have to agree with the fact that it's a good thing to play an instrument. Find out what his own ambitions actually are. Maybe he doesn't even want to play the violin. Find something he is interested in and allow him to do that. I got you something. If you don't interrupt his willingness to do it, neither will he. Sophocles! <laughs> no way! That's awesome, Mom! Now, of course, this doesn't mean we have to let kids run wild. Children need a certain amount of control. And they look to their parents for direction. If they don't get that direction, Finish your homework? they'll think you don't care about them. The key to getting your child to do things without using force is communication. Again, consult their willingness. Are you hungry? Yeah. Okay, can I borrow your helmet to make dinner now? If you can get your child's willingness on something, they will happily do it. You see, 
children instinctively want to contribute to their parents because they know their parents do more to take care of them than they can do back. Can I help you bake cookies? Yes. Children are quite willing to work. A young child will haunt her mother trying to help out. Permit her to do so and she'll get the idea that her presence and activity is desired. You're really good at this. But the child who is not encouraged or permitted to help becomes convinced that her contribution is not wanted. And later on, she'll have definite difficulties regarding work and will actually get quite apathetic about it. Close the refrigerator door, please. If a teen is prevented from working, they begin to feel excluded from society. Not being a part of society, they begin to rebel against it. Therefore, as soon as a child is old enough to understand, it should be explained to them how the family operates, where the food and clothes come from, and so on. And they should be encouraged to help out. I would like a cabbage, please. Which one do you want? This one. Oh, that's a nice one. Good choice, Mom will like it. Let the child figure out for herself what her contribution can be. Thanks, girls. And then let her give it. A person feels able and competent only so long as she is permitted to contribute as much or more than others are contributing to her. Scientology contains a great many tools that will help any parent raise their child to become a self-determined, happy, contributing member of their family. There are even techniques you can learn to help your child recover more rapidly from their bumps and bruises, as well as from the fears and upsets that are so often a part of growing up. Raising children can be one of the most rewarding life experiences of all. With these tools, you'll know precisely how to bring them up to become productive, responsible adults, while giving them the freedom and love they need to participate successfully in the game called life.